Okay, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a haul truck video. Um, is when I left off in part 50, I was discussing that I wanted to get a target saw to cut those leaf springs off with. And what happened was a guy was willing to let me borrow one, but I didn't get it right away. It uh, um, kind of got procrastinated out and I ended up uh, waiting like two weeks before I actually got it. And I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. The guy was willing to let me borrow it and uh, I wasn't going to complain about when I was able to get it. So um, I did finally get it and that's where we're going to go with this chapter. So welcome to chapter 51 of the haul truck build. Okay, so I finally was able to get the target saw. Um, this is it. Um, it had that diamond blade on it originally. I took it off to put the uh, um, uh, yeah cutoff wheel on it. I'm sorry, steel cutoff wheels on it. Uh, the uh, carbon cutoff wheels. Anyways. Um, I didn't he told me to go ahead and use that diamond blade if I wanted to use that to cut it but I didn't really want to. I mean he was a masonry contractor and I don't want to screw that blade up even though he said it was okay didn't matter to him if it got screwed up or not um, but anyways let's go cut some springs Well, it cuts through it, just kind of slow going. A little bit more of it. Some of you that are new to my channel might not realize what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is just cutting these leaf springs off. I'm going to use the front part of the leaf spring as a stabilizer or pivot bracket for the axle and extend the rear out to accommodate airbags or air suspension for the ride on that truck. Um, it is what I'm doing has been covered in pretty much in detail in other chapters of the haul truck. Uh, my plan on what I was going to do and my issues with getting the springs apart on the back. But uh, Basically, that's what I'm doing, so you can go and see the other chapters to get further details on it. Okay, here I am over behind the truck and I've just finished cutting off, um, it would be the right side or the passenger side. So both sides are cut now. All I've got to do is um, take and grind it, um, grind it off uh, smooth. When I started this cut, I uh, it, it was hard to kind of follow. I had put a sharpie line down through there where I wanted it to cut and I kind of went off of that line a little bit. Um, from top to bottom, it's probably maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch, but what I'm gonna do is I, I've gotta clean them up with a grinder, so I'll try and, and grind that down a little bit. Um, that side, <clears throat> the second side that I did, what I did is I took this small cutoff wheel on the uh, angle grinder, uh, the cordless angle grinder and what I did is scored a mark on it so that it was uh, much more evident to follow that uh, silvery mark down than it is a <clears throat> dark sharpie, a blue sharpie on black paint. So um, what I'm going to do, this is a, all the remnants of the springs in here. Uh, got a piece over there too but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of uh, show you what I have to do. I, th I think I've talked about this in probably another video, but it was a long time ago. And uh, let me just kind of uh, update you on what I'm going to do as far as getting 
the air suspension on here. I've got to get a arm that that trails back on it, but let me uh, come back to you with that after I show you something else regarding the new axle. Okay, we're over here at the old axle, and let me zoom you in here, and I'll detail you what I have to discuss here. This is the top of the old axle. There was a pin on this to locate the spring shackle, let's call it, and this is it. So this thing sat on there and that pin fat, sat in that notch. Now the bottom of the springs have a pin and that pin fit into that hole. So the pin for the axle and the pin for the spring were offset enough that they didn't interfere with each other. Now let me take you over to the new axle. Okay, here's the new axle. And here is the pin on this. Um, gonna put a pick and pick up here and show you a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison of the old axle and the new axle. And if you'll notice in the pick that the pin on the old axle is located back here. So, first of all, this plate would have had to been machined out a little bit to get it to fit over the wider um, girth of the axle itself. But the second problem is, is that the pins would hit on each other. Now, this plate wasn't thick enough for the the pin um, f for the pins not to hit each other. In other words, this pin protrudes up so much and the pin from the bottom of the springs protrudes down so much that they would actually hit each other and they're not exactly centered. Um, now I could center it but I don't want them pins hitting on each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new one of these. But the new one of these is also gonna be the extension out the back for the air uh, bag. And the air bag can't fill, uh, fit uh, directly under this because of um, First of all, the spring isn't exactly under the frame rail, but I think I have to offset the bag a little bit in uh, from the frame rail in towards the center of the frame to uh, compensate for the bag not hitting the tires. So um, remember, the bag is approximately 12 inches in diameter when uninflated. So you have to account for that. I'm gonna take you over and I'll show you the stock that I got for it. Okay, so here we are over to the welding table and what I did is picked up a piece of one inch by three inch stock. And the three inch width is the exact same distance of between the spring shackles. So. Uh, that old plate was three inches wide the distance in between the spring shackles uh, Spring u-bolts not shackles. I'm sorry u-bolts is uh, three inch so this is gonna sit there under on top uh, On top of the axle and uh, What it does is I'm gonna drill a hole on one side and a hole on the other side to accommodate the pins. So the pins line up. This plate will be held in place by the spring U-bolts. Um, and then what I'll do is extend it out the back and offset it a little bit and come out a little bit and then make a landing pad for the airbag on it. Now <clears throat> So I'm gonna have some angles in here. 
but it could be offset one way or the other. So what I've got to do is I'm going to take the axle over and put it underneath the back of the truck and kind of figure out the relationship of the axle's center line to um, the spring locations. Now, understand that I, I want to get a location in there for the airbag that is going to be somewhere near the lower spectrum of where the airbag is going to be. I don't want it at the bottom of the airbag to set it up. I want it kind of mm, maybe like a quarter of a way up for the airbag rise so that the airbag um, well I, I could do it the other way but let me get into that when I take you over and bring the axle over to the back of the truck and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. It's hard to explain it without having a visual reference to it. So I'll bring you back and show you that. So what I need to do is get this mess cleaned up and then I'm going to bring the axle back here and uh, start trying to lay it out a little bit. I've just uh, taken all the spring seal put it on a cart I'll take it up front by the uh, welding table I'm not sure I'm probably gonna keep it uh, you can actually make stuff out of spring steel like knives stuff like that I'm not that I make knives but my grandson might want it Okay, so here I am over to the back side of the haul truck after I've got the axle back over here. <clears throat> I showed you bringing it back um, and everything. So what I did is uh, brought the axle. Now it isn't positioned exactly, uh, but I did put the rims on so that uh, I would get a, really, get a relationship to where that airbag has to fall. And um, now, understand that this axle has to shift about two feet forward um, to get under those springs so just so that um, you get a kind of perspective of it but this is what I'll be doing probably for the next week is working out the geometry of how that axle is going to fit on there what the height of the frame and everything is going to be uh, the frame logically has to be picked up to get them springs out, up on top of the axle. The axle kind of moved forward to show, see the position of it and where the airbags can be put in relationship to it. Now, from looking at it, again, the axle has to shift a couple of feet forward. I might be able to get the airbag underneath the frame rail. So. Uh, but that'll be something that'll be looked at. They'll probably, even if I could get it underneath the frame rail, a cross member going across the the two um, to help support um, support the plate that the top of the airbag is going to rest upon. But anyways, um, that's going to do it for this chapter. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Leave a comment.